Hey guys, I'm Jonathan. Welcome to this new video. We will learn how to do this. Just before starting the video, I wanted to tell you that you can download the source file. The link is in the description. If you discover this channel, I currently publish two to three videos per week related to filmmaking, advertising video, and 3D. With Cinema 4D, Blender and Houdini. So, if you are interested with these subjects, don't hesitate to subscribe. I thank in advance all the people who like, comment and share my videos. You know it helped me a lot. If you want to have help, you can join the Discord server and the Facebook group. The links are in description. We don't waste any more time. If you are ready, let's go. Okay, so here is my final composition. I'm going to run the animation. So, this is the result. So you have the option to download all the resources so you can follow the tutorial for free in the description. So, here, we're going to use the four cloud videos that are right there. We're going to use an image for the logo in PNG and an image for the shoe that I've clipped on Photoshop. So, we're only using that and then the text. We're going to do them directly in After Effects. So it's really a very simple scene, but it works very well. I think the animation is pretty cool. So here, in my project panel, I created three folders. So a first folder with all my images, so the cloud videos, the Nike logo and the pair of shoes. And then here I have a composition window. So, here. I had planned to do several compositions, but in the end, I only did one. So, here, it's not necessary to create a composition folder. So, here, I'm going to right-click on a new composition. We'll start from scratch. So, in terms of the name of the composition, you can call it whatever you want. So, I'm just going to call it animation. Then, here, the width, I'm going to put 1920 and the height 1080 so that way, we have a full HD resolution. The frame rate, I'm going to leave it at 30 frames per second and here. I'm going to put in 90 frames. That should be enough. So I'm going to put 0.90 and I'm going to do OK. And so here we have our composition that was created. You can find it right here in the project panel and drag it into the corresponding folder if you ever created subfolders. So here, what I'm going to do already is I'm going to add a solid. So I want to right click new in solid. So by default, it's in black. So I'm going to do OK. I'm going to leave it like that. So, this is going to be the background of our animation that we will come and modify afterwards. So, next, I'll be able to come and get my shoe image. I'm going to go here to the images folder. I remind you, you have the possibility to download the images in the description. So, here, I'm going to take my image that's right here. I'm going to put it on top of the solid and so here. It's maybe a little bit too big so I'm going to scale it down. So then I'm going to go to the position level and I'm going to move it a little bit. Maybe at this level. I'm going to put 1280. So I put 1280 on the X axis and 540 on the Y axis. And then we can start to animate the shoe, which is like this. So this is not a video, but an animation made with After Effects. So to do this, we're going to use the puppet tool to be able to animate our image. So how do we do that? We're going to take the puppet tool here, which is right here. And so here, I'm going to place a first point here. I'm going to place a second point at this level, a third point here and a fourth point about here. So then I go back and take my selection tool. And if I move this point here, you can see that we can create an animation like this. And by default, it has added a puppet effect here at the layer level and we can go here to net and to deformation. And there you can add keyframes on the different anchor points that you've added here at the shoe level to be able to do your deformation. So I'm going to start my animation at frame 10. So I'm going to move the cursor here at frame 10 at this level. So I'm going to go to the anchor point that I've placed here at the top of the shoe. So if I click on it, you can see that it corresponds here to point number one. So, here, I'm going to go inside and I'm going to place a keyframe on the position. So, by default, the keyframe has been placed at frame zero. I'm going to move it. I'm going to put it at frame 10. And then I'll be able to go to frame 70. So, it's up to you. You do an animation for as long as you want. And then I'll be able to move this point up so that I can simply distort it. You have to try to find the right proportions so as not to deform the shoe too much. So, I think it doesn't look too bad. After that, it's up to you to make the adjustments as you wish. If I press play, we can see that we have our animation on the shoe. So that's cool. So now what we can do is adjust these keyframes to have a speed curve that is rather consistent. So here, I select the two images and I press F9 to be able to smooth them out. And then I'm going to go here to the speed graph. So here we have to select here, speed graphs and not value graphs. And here, I'm going to select the point here and I'm going to move it like this so that I can create an acceleration at the beginning and then slow down the speed at the end. if I press play. So, here, it might be a bit too much. I'm going to reduce it, here. About like this. It looks pretty good to me. Here, if I press play, 
we can see that we have a fairly smooth acceleration at the beginning, and then we have a progressive slowdown until image 70. Then, I'm going to click here on the graphic editor to go back to the timeline, and now I'll be able to change the movement of my shoe. So, here, in image 15, we'll say that the position and rotation are about at this level. So I press P, I add a keyframe here, I press R, I add a keyframe, so for the rotation and then I go to frame 0 and I can move my shoe. So I'm going to put it right about here. And here, if I press play, we can see that we have a displacement that is linear at the level of our position. So, what we can do is go here, to the small points, you can adjust your displacement and there. We can add a curve to be able to have a displacement of position and rounding. So, this is exactly what I'm going to do. You can see that we already have something pretty nice. So, next, in terms of the rotation. I'm going to make it look like it's a running shoe. So I'm going to try to keep the natural movement. So, here I'm going to go and change the rotation and I'm going to put it at. I'm going to put it at maybe plus 20. That's about it, plus 20. And maybe even here in image 15. I can change it a little bit. For example, to minus 10. If I press play, we get this. So here, if we look at our animation, we can see that we have a coherent movement. However, the keyframes are a bit too rough. It's not smooth enough. So in order to do that, I'm going to unfold my keyframes here. So I press U to see my keyframes. I'm going to select the position and rotation keyframes and I'm going to press F9 to be able to smooth them out. Then I'm going to go to the graph editor right here so I can change the curve like I did earlier. And here, I'm going to select my position and I'm going to move my curve so that I can do an acceleration at the beginning and a deceleration at the end. And so for now, we have this, so it's not bad. So we can, maybe change the movement curve a little bit more at the puppet level. So here I'm going to select puppet position one, which is right here and I'm going to change the curve a little bit so that it matches the displacement in position. So I think it's not bad. The movement is pretty smooth so we'll leave it like that. I'm going to click here to go back to the timeline, and now we're going to add our clouds. So, here, I'm going to go to my images folder and I'm going to select my clouds. So, here, I'm going to take the three images that are there. I'm going to put them underneath the shoe and then I'm going to take all these layers. The shoe plus the clouds and I'm going to place them in 3D. So by clicking here on the little cube, you can simply place your different layers in 3D. By the way, if you don't know anything about 3D and After Effects, I invite you to go and see my video. I made a video to explain a little bit how it works. So, here, I'm going to hide my first two clouds and I'm going to place them one by one. For the moment, I'm only leaving one visible and I'm also leaving the shoe visible. So, next, I'm going to place myself in two horizontal views and then I'll be able to place my 3D layer at the level of my scene. So, I'm going to place it in front of my shoe and then, I just have to make some adjustments to the shoe to obtain a result that seems coherent with the clouds. So, next, we can also add the camera. So I'm going to right-click, New in Camera. I'm going to leave the 50mm preset for the moment, and we'll come and change it later. So, here, you can see the camera on the 3D view at this level, with the line here in red. So, here, I'm going to place my first cloud. So I'm going to put it more or less like this. I'm going to make a small rotation. So, all you have to do is play with the different axes to place your cloud as you wish. Then I'm going to select my second cloud. We can also adjust the scale if necessary, enlarge or shrink them. And so here, same thing. I'm going to come and play with the different axes to get a result that looks pretty good. And I'm going to do exactly the same thing with the last cloud. So I'm going to place it like this. I'm going to move it away. So okay. Then we're going to add some blur to our camera. So here, I'm going to switch back to one view. I'm going to go to 100% here and then I'll come in and make some adjustments if needed. So, here, I'm going to go to my camera. I'm going to go to Layers, Camera Settings. So, here, I'm going to set the aperture to maybe 400 millimeters. Then, we can also adjust the focus distance. Maybe for you, it's not very well placed at the moment. So, for that, we have to select the camera. We're already going to put ourselves in two horizontal views here. And so there, I can go to the Camera Settings layer. And there, you have here the focus distance. So you can see here on the left side of my window, that the first line that is at this level, is the focus distance. So you have to make sure that the focus distance is at the level of the shoe layer. So you see, if I move away, you can see that it is totally blurred. So you have to make sure that it is at the level of the shoe layer which is in the center of the scene. So if I put myself there normally, it's totally clear. So here, I can do okay. I can go back to one view and we can see that it worked well. And then, we can adjust the clouds. We can play with the depth to have more or less blur. So if I put it closer to the shoe, 
it becomes clear. If I put it further away, it becomes blurred. So, you play around with the different parameters. So, for now, if I run play, we get this. So okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to add a color gradient here on our solid. So now I'm going to go into my effects and I'm going to look for the four color gradient effect and I'm going to take it and put it on my solid. And so here, with this effect, you have the possibility to choose the four colors that you will use for the gradient. And here with the small points, you have the possibility to move your gradient in your scene. So here, I'm going to take the eyedropper. I'm going to select a color a little bit more like this one. I'm going to select a fairly dark black. Select a little bit lighter black. So about that level and then I'm going to select a blue. Maybe I'll come and adjust it later. So, here, I'm going to reverse the two points. So I'm going to take this point. I'm going to put it at the top in this one. I'm going to put it at the bottom so that I can really have the lightest tone at the top. So that I can make it look a little bit like a sun. And here, I'm going to bring my two black dots closer together to have a little more contrast. So here we are. Afterwards, you can play with the colors you want. If your shoe doesn't have any blue, there's no point in putting a blue background. You can do absolutely anything you want here with the color gradient. So next, I'm going to be able to add my Nike logo. So here I'm going to go back into the project panel. I'm going to go into my images. I'm going to take the Nike PNG logo. I'm going to put it underneath the camera and I'm going to be able to come here on fill. By default it's black and like that. I'm going to be able to put it in white. So I'm going to go here, on fill. I'm going to select a blue like this and I'm going to come and remove some saturation. So I'm going to go here to saturate. And I'm going to put it like this. It's going to be white with really light. Light blue tones. So here we go. And then I'm going to be able to come in and scale it down. So I'll press S and I'll scale it down to 25%. And I'll be able to put the logo right here at the top right corner. So we'll say that in image 15, we want the logo to be in this position. So I press P on the logo. I add a keyframe. I go back to image 0 and I add a keyframe this time on the Y position to be able to mount it outside the scene. And now I'm going to adjust my keyframes like I did before. So I select them. I press F9. I go here to the graphic and there I will be able to adjust this time like before. A big acceleration at the beginning and a progressive slowing down at the end. So we can add text directly. So, I'm going to be able to right click. I'll do new to add a new layer. And I'll add a text layer. And here I'm going to type my text kiss my air. You can type absolutely anything you want. I'm going to put my text layer underneath my camera. I like to keep my camera on top here in my layer tree. So then here, we can double click and I'll put the font. And so I'm going to choose the Bob Ewan font here. You can download it for free on the internet. And I'm going to set the size here to 350 and I'm going to increase the height here to space out my words a little bit. So here, I think I'm going to set it to 250. So here, I'm going to be able to move my text like this. I'm going to double click. I'm going to change the color. So here, I'm going to take my eyedropper and I'm going to put a color about like this, really dark blue. And then I'm going to change the anchor point of my text so that I can simply put it back in the center of my text layer. So I'm going to use the Motion 3 plugin. But you also have a plugin called Move Anchor Point I think, which I think is free. Or you can move it by hand, just with the tool that's there to move the anchor point. But with the Motion 3 plugin, you just click here. Just click here. It goes right back to the center. So then I'll go to align. I'll put it in the center here and I'll put it on the left side here. And then I'm going to go here to the blend modes and I'm going to set it to soft light. So it's going to take on a little bit of the background colors and I'm going to be able to directly change its transparency. So I'm going to press T and at the opacity level, I'm going to set it to 35 and I'm going to add a mask so that I can add a little bit of gradient here at the top and at the bottom. So to do this, I'm going to select my text layer. I'm going to select the rectangle tool here and I'm going to make a mask pretty much like this. I'm going to go into my mask settings. So there, if it's not open, you just press the M key and here you have the mask settings and I'm going to increase the progressive outline. I'm going to set it to about 200. So next, I'm going to be able to add a drop shadow to my text as well so here I'm going to go into my effects. I'm going to go and get the drop shadow effect. I'm going to take my effect and put it on my text in here. At the color level, I'm going to put a slightly gray drop shadow and I'm going to be able to change its distance. So I'm going to set it to 10. And here, at the smoothing level, I'm going to set it to 15. So it's okay for the first text. I'll be able to add the second one. So for this, like before, right click, new text. And this time, I'm going to type new. I'm going to go to the line. I'm going to type in the shoe model. So, adapt BB black. Okay, I'm going to be able to double click on it. Now this time, I'm going to reduce it right. I think I'm going to set it to 70. I'm also going to reduce the height here, between the words. And then, in terms of the font, 
I'm going to double click. I'm going to change it and I'm going to use the Babaz new font, which you can also download for free from the internet. So here, the text seems a bit small. I'm going to double click and I'm going to set the font to 100 and I'm going to make the new one a little bit bigger. So, here, I just select the new and I'm going to set it to 150 and I'll be able to put my text in white. So, here, I'm going to select a white. So here, I'm going to select a slightly off-white, slightly bluish. And I'm going to be able to move my anchor point to the center, just like before. And I'm going to move my text, so I'm going to put it at about this level and then I'm just going to align it. And then I'm just going to come and align it on the y-axis, and I'm going to put it in the center. So okay then to come and change the color of the new. So, here, I'm going to select the new. I'm going to move forward in the timeline and I'm going to use the eyedropper to select the blue that's right there. A really light blue. And I'll leave it like that. So, here, next, I'm going to add the Gaussian blur effect on the text that is in the background so that it attracts the eye a little less. So here, I'll take the Gaussian blur. I put it on the text in the background. So this one. And I'm going to set the Gaussian blur effect to 10. So, this way, it attracts the eye a little bit less. And now I'll be able to add a drop shadow on the text that we just added. A drop shadow on the new text. And this time, I leave the shadow in black. For the distance, I'm going to set it to 10 and for the smoothing, I'm going to set it to 8. So okay. And now I'm going to simply add an animation preset to my text. You can find a lot of presets for free on the internet. Text animation preset v3, and I'm going to put in zoom type. So I'm going to select it and I'm going to place it here on my new text. And if I press play, we have our animation. So the last thing we can do is to animate the transparency here on the text, in the background. So we can say that at frame 15 it is 35% transparent, so as we had set. So, here, I press T. We have 35% and I'm going to go here to the zero image and I'm going to set the transparency to 5%. I select my two key images and I press F9 to be able to smooth them out and now we have our finished animation. So now there's nothing stopping you from adding some soon design, adding some music to your animation. You can do whatever you want. You can also add drop shadows on your other elements such as the shoe the clouds and the logo if you want to add a little more depth to your animation. And then, the last little thing we can do is to add a layer, an effects layer. So there, we're going to right-click new and effects layer. And then, we put it above the tree of our layers and we can come and get the luminosity effect. Brightness and contrast. So we'll put it on our effect layer and there we can increase the brightness to 25 and increase the contrast to 20. So, we can also come and get the curved effect. We will also place it on our effect layer. So there, we can adjust the curve if you ever want to, to add a little more contrast and have a little more control over the highlights and the lowlights. So this is before the curve effect and this is after. So it adds a little bit of contrast and this is before the brightness and contrast effect. And this is after. So here we have our finished animation. It's really an animation that is very simple and very easy to set up but that works very well. So, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please feel free to like, subscribe and share to support my work. I see you next time. Bye.